gentlemen, this is Larry Bud Melman. Welcome to the second anniversary celebration of Late Night with David Letterman. We're all geared up for a spectacular evening of music and memories. But before we begin the festivities, I'd like to perform a toast. Here's to you and here's to me, but you're not here. So here's two to me. back to the studio and let the games begin. From New York, where we're all so excited we're bumping into each other, it's Late Night with David Letterman's second anniversary show and party. Tonight, Mr. T, Marielle Hemingway, Nastasia Kinski, Andy Kaufman, Joe Theismann, and Grizzly Adams himself, Dan Haggerty. Also, highlights of the past two years, new gift items, stupid pet tricks, stupid human tricks, steamroller crushings, and more. Plus, Larry Bud Melman reporting from the big party at the Casino in the Park Room with the New York Marriott Essex House Hotel. And now, a man who's hoping they don't eat all the cocktail wieners before he gets to the party, David Letterman! Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our gala second anniversary special tonight. And what a show we have packed into a scant 90 minutes for you. I, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm very proud. People say to me, Dave, you've been on the air now two years. What is your most, what are you most proud of? And, and I'll tell you, frankly, we have done a show in this studio every night of the week for, for two full years. This studio is located in the center of Manhattan. Midtown, New York, New York. The town so nice, they named it twice. 350 shows, and in that time, ladies and gentlemen, we have had very little gunplay to speak of. Thank you very much. I, I hope that holds true for tonight. So I'm coming down the elevator, and I run into this uh, NBC executive, and he says, Dave, nice to see you. He says, what's new? And I said, well, tonight is our second anniversary special. And he says, great, congratulations. What, what network? So <laughs> you can imagine how proud I am tonight. We, uh, I'm serious. Let me start telling you now what you can expect on this program. We are going to take a look at fun with guests that we have had over the last two years. The best of stupid pet tricks in this studio tonight. Uh, we are also going to have remote highlights, you know, when we visit little areas around uh, this great town of ours. The best of stupid human tricks. Also, uh, uh, a psychologist is going to come in here and explain why I gesture with my index finger. Uh, what else do we have? Oh. The man you saw at the beginning of this program, our own Larry Bud Melman, we have assembled golden moments from the last two years featuring Mr. Melman. We will be taking a look at the after school special, They Took My Show Away. We're also going to be taking a look at some of the more peculiar events that we have slapped together for North America in the last two years. Also the best of the steamroller, that's right, here tonight. <laughs> Everybody here also gets a free flu shot. Thank you. The, uh, the Merchant Marine Academy Choir singing at the Essex House Hotel. Um, what else? Uh, plenty of surprises. I think now it's time to go back to the Casino on the Park Ballroom at the Essex House Hotel and check in with our own Larry Bud Melman and find out the flavor of the festivities. Larry, can you hear me? Uh, 
Larry. David. Yes. How I wish you and your hundreds of home viewers could be with us here as the party gets underway. For hours now, guests have been arriving here in the beautiful casino on the park room at New York's stately Essex House Hotel. There's no gambling in this casino unless you take your chances with the road speed. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh -huh, yeah. The food is delightful and so is the company. As I survey this glittering assemblage, I see so many marvelous stars, so many familiar faces, and a number of hotel employees that I don't know. They're all here today, the singers, the dancers, the two Shriners, and TV's Grizzly Adams, actor Dan Haggard. All separate tiles in the human mosaic, and it's a late night anniversary party. Larry, it certainly looks like a wonderful time. Why, why is it that Dr. Ruth Westheimer is talking to the two Shriners? We... Okay, apparently Larry can't hear us now, and maybe that's to the good. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to say hello to uh, our good friend, our musical director. Let me tell you a couple of things about this man you may not already know. At the risk of repeating myself, first of all, he's not from this country. Secondly, you probably know him best as Timmy on the old Lassie show, Paul Schaefer. <laughs> so much. David, you're too much. You know, it's a special, special, special night. We're all feeling very, very special. One thing that's making us feel kind of special over here is that our good friend David Sanborn has dropped by to David, join nice us. To you Thank you very much for your little alto sax work. And, and hey, let's not forget the cats who have been loyal, so loyal to us and have been here putting out that hard drive in rhythm and blues and rock and roll music every week. How about Hiram Bullock? Hiram Bullock? Hiram? Yeah. Will Lee. Will? Will Lee on the bass guitar. How about Will Lee, the best bass player in the world? Steve Jordan, of course, a guy who, uh, he would be here, but as you know, he was trying to dance like James Brown. That's he, right. He Injured did a himself. He drop, and he's not as young as he used to be. He hurt himself. <laughs> but uh, joining us for the special and making us feel every bit as special as uh, you can possibly feel on another. Like Mr. Steve Gadd. Steve, nice uh, to have you here. And Dave. Congratulations, Steve. Thank you very much. Same yeah. to you, Paul. I appreciate uh, everything over the last two years. And speaking of that, over the last two years, we have presented what seems like hundreds and hundreds of new gift products that had just come out on the market. Well, after searching through the best of these new gift items, we found several that hadn't been thrown out yet. And we've assembled them here tonight and invite you now to window shop with us as we look at the late night anniversary collection of new gifts, shall we? First of all, some things just seem to go together. Soup and sandwiches, brushing and flossing, and now, of course, Jack LaLanne and ear hygiene. That's right, it's the Jack LaLanne Q-tip dispenser. It's so gosh darn cute, you'll want to scream. And it just seems to... Excuse me, I'm sorry. You know... For centuries, women have known that nothing smooths and softens skin like lotion. But there always is that puzzling problem of how do you store that messy stuff? Well, here now is the perfect answer. The new lotion in a drawer. Yes, it's all at your fingertips. There's the lotion. Here, of course, is the oil. And finally, the drawer full of cream. Yes, there it is. Lotion in a drawer. Well... It took us two years to come up with this one. <laughs> now, this music box is quite a darling. It's shaped like a, a miniature television set, as you can see. And when you lift the lid, it plays the haunting theme from the emergency broadcast system. <laughs> That's lovely, isn't it? All right, now, you know, everybody knows that the little light in your refrigerator goes out when you close the door, of course. Or does it? Well, now at last you can be sure with this. This, of course, is the refrigerator periscope. Yep. Yeah, it's off. And certainly a small price to pay for a good night's sleep, don't you think? Finally, for those who find shaving dull every morning, how about this? This is the Rabid Dog Shaving Cream Dispenser. 
realistic foaming mouth, hold six ounces of shaving cream or dessert topping. Yes. Okay. Uh, we got uh, an unbelievable amount of... <laughs> Quite a show for you folks tonight. It's uh, going to be a lot of fun, so come on back after you take a look at this. the show. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're familiar with our program, you know that every Thursday evening we uh, devote some time to answering our voluminous viewer mail. And over the last two years, we certainly have received quite a variety. And we thank everybody who uh, uh, has sent uh, letters to us, and we certainly appreciate your kind support. We thought tonight we would give you an example of how that particular segment works. We have a, a letter here we received a couple of months ago, and, and we'll show you how we answered uh, this particular letter and give you an idea how this thing goes. Uh, Dear Dave, I suppose that you think of yourself and other entertainers as being important. Ha! Let me put it in perspective for you, Dave. You are one of 10,000 billion living organisms that have inhabited this planet since the creation of life itself. The planet that you live on is a small, ordinary rock sphere orbiting a common little sun tucked away in an obscure corner of a plain old spiral galaxy. Assuming that you weigh 1,000 pounds, which, by the way, is pretty close, your mass would be one billion, 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 billionth of the total mass of the known universe. Important? Not hardly. And it's signed, John Campbell, Lansdale, Pennsylvania. Well, John, your perspective is very interesting, but I, I think you failed to perceive the full scope of this very complicated subject. Perhaps this clip from the award-winning science film entitled The Universe and You, produced by Bell Laboratories in cooperation with the Smithsonian Institute and the National Aeronautic and Space Administration, will help clear things up. Your mass would be one billion, 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 the total mass of the known universe. Let's go a step further and look at a contrast, not of size, but of significance. For example, entertainer David Letterman has an average viewing audience of well over six million people. He makes use of the National Broadcasting Company, which has over 500,000 employees across the United States. And his salary, although not yet known, is believed to be such that he could quit his job right now and be a wealthy man for a hundred years. By contrast, John Campbell of Lansdale, Pennsylvania, has no job, no friends, and interviews with his parents suggest that he soon will have no home. Yes, John Campbell might as well be an amoeba to such a man as David Lennon. Of course, just an example of of uh, some of the, the viewer mail that we answer every Thursday night. Now, we're going to be going back to the uh, casino on the park at the Essex House Hotel in a few minutes, but before we do that, let me uh, show you something. Over the past two years, we have welcomed many hundreds of guests to our show, and, and we've had a good time with dozens of them. So we, <laughs> we've put together some of the memorable moments that we have had with these people, and we would now like to share those occasions and events with you. Watch closely. We're going to now take a look at some of your 200 shoes. Oh, and, God. And, and as we see the parade of shoes before us, ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated, too. <laughs> what, what's in the front there? What would that be? Uh, that first one I never wore. You've that, never worn them? No. That second pair I wore in uh, Frankenstein, Andy Warhol's Frankenstein. Uh -huh. Those pair, that pair I wore, all, I was mugged in those blue... Uh, what kind of jobs were you... Were you uh, <laughs> like secretarial work, I'm guessing, is out. That's, that's not good. Just, just a joke. Yeah. Yeah. Now you See, have... that's why I'm squeezing this ball. Said, so in case he get to telling them corny jokes, I'm going to squeeze this ball. If I squeeze the ball too many times, if I, you see me squeeze the ball over ten times, that means cut jokes out of the square. It's about six times already. Oh, shit. 
sense. This happens to be a 35 pound one. I need assistance on this, really. Oh, sorry, you need help lifting yeah. your uh, nuts? <laughs> Just be in the next room if you need me. Um, so when you're working in a, in a theater, are the audience nice people? <laughs> nice. Let me stand up and Please tell do. you about the theater Broadway. Quiet, you. I'm on stage. <laughs> well, I always have three pointers, and I hope I don't forget them right now. <laughs> now, one pointer is... There are three of them. They all begin with the same letter. It's a mnemonic device. And I'm trying to recall what they are. And this is certainly an embarrassing moment. I know what you're talking about. It's, uh, it's, uh, they begin with the letter O. That's right. It begins with the letter O. Yeah. That is correct. And One is obey the rules. Obey the rules. Right. And uh, the other is, letter O, obey the rules. We had, I had them this afternoon. One is often enter. Enter often, that is correct. Yeah, often enter. And the third one? the third one, Gerard. Organize your material. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. And uh, your name is? Mariel Hemingway. Mariel Hemingway. And uh, what do you... <laughs> and, and what do you do for a living, Mariel? I clean fish. You clean fish. Okay, great. <laughs> Yes, come on down. Uh, Mariel, if you just go ahead and uh, clean the fish. Yeah. Wouldn't the tuna melt hit the spot just about now? But with every failure, David, with every failure, my reputation grows. One of these days, you'll see my picture on every postage stamp. One of these days, I'll funerize the bird. Is, uh, is that a Banlon shirt? <laughs> Your hair is a little different than, uh... Yes? It's a little different, isn't it? A little, or maybe it's not. No. You, you don't normally, or maybe you do, do you? Of course I do. I, I don't know. You normally have... Different? Now, why is that? What happened there? <laughs> What's no. the matter with you? Well, I, no, nothing's the matter with me. Uh, well, maybe there is. I could have sued you for everything you're worth. Well, no, I didn't, because that's, I'm not that kind of a guy. Yeah. Now, you know what, uh, What kind of a you're... guy are you? be over here. We're going to pause here for station you know, I... identification and get the hoses out here. words on TV. I'm not... But, but what you can't do is throw coffee. I've said it over and over again. Uh, depends. I don't... God, I look at myself up there and I look awful. <laughs> See, that's what I was talking about earlier. suggested to her, and the people out there just reminded me of that, that if she does want to feel something inside her vagina, that it's perfectly all right to either use a cucumber or...
yes, we got to go away for a commercial. We'll be right back with plenty more stuff. We have presented uh, many, many stupid pet tricks tonight. We are going to show you a representative sample. Let me remind you now, ladies and gentlemen, this is only an exhibition. This is not a competition. Please, no wagering. Our first participant tonight, Mr. Jack Elliott. Jack! Hi, Jack. Nice to see you, Jack. Nice to see you again. And uh, this is your uh, your dog, obviously. What is yes, the dog's name? My dog, Della. Hello, Della. How are you? And what is Della going to do for us tonight? Della's going to chase the flashlight beam thrown by the flashlight. All right. And uh, how, how did uh, Della learn to do this? Well, one day I uh, had to go down to the cellar to get a crescent wrench. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the light was burned out down there. I grabbed the flashlight, turned it on, and... Magic. Oh, that was it. Okay. Uh, do, do, we need, do we need to turn the lights down for you, Jack? That, that would help. Okay, Hal, if you turn down the lights, uh, there we go. Here comes uh, Della chasing the beam of light. All right. <laughs> Dog seems to be a little confused. You don't keep this animal in a cave, do you, Jack? Oh, no, no, no. Very nice, Jack. Oh, thank you for this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jack. Nice to see you, Della. There it is, uh, the miracle of slow motion instant replay. Our next participant, Carolyn Baker. Carolyn. Uh-oh. <laughs> Hi, Carolyn. How are you? Nice to see you. Now, you got yourself a dog here, don't you? What, you, what kind of an animal is this? He's an English bulldog. English bulldog, and his name Rock, is? Rocky. And, Rocky Rollins. And what exactly Rocky, is he? Rocky. That's all right. Just stay. What exactly stay is Rocky right. doing there, Carolyn? He's breathing. He has a difficult time. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. And what is, what is his? <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely he disposition this animal shirt. has. Hi, Rocky. How are you? Rocky. All right. What is, what is Rocky going to do, Carolyn? Rocky's going to, well, Rocky? <laughs> he may have done it already. Rock, um, Rocky's going to jump for his toy, pull it, and he then I'm going to swing him. Rock! Okay, he's going to you're gonna jump for the toy, and you're going to... And, he, and he's going to pull it. Rock, right. Rocky, not yet, in oh, a minute. Oh, my. And then he's going to swing on his way. Okay, go ahead. Carolyn and Rocky is okay. swinging on the toy. You ready, Rock? <laughs> Where is he jumping? That what was a, a joke. mild mannered on, animal. One more time. You ready? I like how the Excuse saliva me, sort of flies all over my suit. No. Okay. Baker and Rocky. Here they are. Oh, nicely done. Nice to see you. Rocky, okay, Rocky. Rock, rock. Okay. Rocky, let's go. Okay. Hello. Good night. See you, Rocky. Our next participant, uh, Mary Cassian and her poodle, Randy. Uh, come on out, Mary. Mary. There she is. It's, you know, Mary, it's just too bad you didn't have time to think up a trick. <laughs> what? Now, is, uh, is, is this one of those dogs the Russians have been experimenting on? Randy, how are you? Nice to see you. He's just a little excited. All right. And uh, what will Randy uh, do for us tonight, Mary? Well, aside of trying to pull 
the toy. He's going to carry his little basket and go up the stairs. All right, Randy will now walk upstairs, ladies and gentlemen. There's something, there's something wrong here. Randy? Nice to see you. Mary, thank you very much. Uh, okay, there they are. In slow motion, instant replay. We gotta go away for a commercial. My thanks to everybody who's helped us out with Stupid Petrick. Thanks again, Mary. We'll be right back. Uh, we're going to the party with Mary. Coming up in uh, this half hour of the program, you're going to see the best of stupid human tricks, also golden moments with our own Larry Bud Melman. And in the next couple of weeks in our program, you'll see Robert Klein, Steve Martin from The Police, Stuart Copeland, Robin Williams, Carol King, Elaine Boozler, and Gracie Slick. So uh, we have plenty of stuff planned for you folks. Also, next week begins our uh, Virgin Islands Week. Well, uh, while this show is in progress, we're simultaneously celebrating at the uh, Casino on the Park Room at the Essex House here in New York City. Larry Melman is standing by with uh, guests who have been with us over the past two years. May we check in with Larry at this time. Larry, can you hear me? <laughs> Hi, Dave. Hi, Boy, Larry. we're really having some fun tonight. Uh -huh. This is Mel Kachita, the Steve Martin of Peru from our International Day Show. And this is his translator, Ms. Cassiano. Ask him if he is getting paid for this. <laughs> Is that that's part of our show? <laughs> Is that it? Are we are we okay? Well, that gives you kind of an idea of the flavor going on there at the party. Also, kind of makes you want to pick up something and throw it, doesn't it? Well. <laughs> Uh, you know, often on this program, we venture out of the studio to visit many of the shops and the sites and events that can be found right here in the New York area. The result of these excursions we call remote broadcasts. Here now, a sample of the last two years of remote segments. In the last several years, much has been uh, said and written about Alan Alda, the TV star and the uh, film star, the motion picture director, writer, humanitarian, champion of minority causes. but. Surprisingly enough, we know very little about Alan Alda, a guy who likes Chinese food. And that's why we're here at the Hunan Park restaurant. What kind of food does he enjoy? He likes stream beans, and he likes um, cold noodle with a sesame sauce, fried dumpling. Most uh, food we have, he likes very much. One of the great things about being in the theater district, you never know when you're going to run into some of the top stars. For example, there's James Coco. James! <laughs> Celebrities and their dry cleaning. Special problems, how do they handle it? That's why we're here at the DuPont Dry Cleaners. Now, this was a pretty exciting. Paul Newman. That, he don't come in here, but the two ladies that are with him do. They're two. Janet and insane. Louise Arters. Yeah, and they appeared in a film with him, and they bring in quite a bit of cleaning also. Frank, uh, what can you tell us about celebrities and their auto body repairs. Let's, uh, I guess, just start with this gentleman here, Mr. Frank Sinatra. What kind of work has he had done here? Uh, Mr. Frank Sinatra I've never met in person. I have corresponded by mail, and uh, I have received uh, what photographs and communications with the mail from uh, his office. Uh, you've never actually worked on Frank's car? As far as I know, no. We're, we're very lucky today. I just saw the first lady of the American theater, Miss Helen Hayes. <laughs> Helen! Helen! Excuse me. Helen! I, I thought it was Helen. I noticed you had photos of uh, our, our president, Ronald Reagan. Has he ever been in here? No. But, uh, he hasn't been in here yet. Frederick Seldman, 
better known as the Mattress King. Is there a Mattress Queen? Yes, there is. There are also two princes. Lumber Boys, very popular uh, Saturday morning kids program. Uh, Henry, you're uh, one of the uh, Lumber Boys. What's the funniest thing that's happened to you since you've been uh, with the company? Last week, my boss used that high low to take off some particle board off that same identical truck, and the particle board came off into the street. My boss went up in the air and came down. <laughs> <laughs> Is he still alive? Yeah, he's still alive. We had a little hemorrhoid problem, but he made it all right. Yeah. And uh, you're, so you're proud to be one of these uh, lumber boys? No comment. Ladies and gentlemen, Elizabeth Taylor. Liz, Liz, do you have a minute? Liz. Okay, Richard, uh, tell us about this one. The fabulous suction will lift bowling ball. There it is. Pick it up. Pick it up. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Excuse me, sir. Uh, are you here to see the world's largest humidor? World's largest what? World's largest humidor. Have you ever seen the world's largest humidor? No, I haven't. Any interest in that? None whatsoever. Earlier this week, the work began on the tunnel that will connect Roosevelt Island with the city of New York on Manhattan. How's uh, the work progressing? Well, we're not tunnel. We're looking for a gas main. How long does it usually take you to find a gas main? Well, we found it, but we're not what we're looking for. We're looking for I.J. Cupman's. We got put, uh... Looking for I.J. Cupman? That's right. How long has he been missing? Just a minute. I think I just saw Richard Harris star at Broadway's Camelot. Richard! How you doing? How many donuts a day should a person eat? Hey, about 150 dozen a day. Happy's parking lot. The happiest parking lot in town. You, you happy? No, I'm Eddie. If you're uh, Eddie and this is Happy's parking lot, where is Happy? Happy's about six feet under. He died about ten years ago. The name of the store is Just Bulbs, and that's exactly what we sell. Just Bulbs. Okay, so besides bulbs, what do you have here? Nothing. How about shades? Could you get shades here? No, we are Just Bulbs. If you want shades, maybe go to a place called Just Shades. We sell nothing but black shades at discount prices. What, uh, what is the name of the store? Just Shades. And uh, what, what can you get in here? What can you get in here? Only Shades. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, why we're, that's why our name is Just Shades. But seriously, what, what can you get besides Shades here? You know who that was? The first lady of the American theater, ladies and gentlemen, Helen Hayes. Helen! <laughs> Helen! Now a chance to meet a man who is just as famous in this country as he is, of course, in the Orient. Your friend and mine, Mr. Egg Roll. Yeah. What's a typical day like for Mr. Egg Roll? Thursday, Friday, like paydays. And uh, shopping days, like uh, holidays, Easter, Christmas day. Okay, well, good luck to you and uh, Mrs. Egg Roll and uh, the young Egg Roll children, and congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The first lady of the American theater. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Helen Hayes. Helen, I just want to thank you for all of the wonderful moments you've given the American theater doors. Some, some of the islanders now doing Elvis. but a lifetime of memories. It's a good time to be going. The crew and I are all a little restless and itching to get back to sea. Thank you. Good night. Drive safely. We will be right back with the best of two years of stupid human tricks at the Enigma Lincoln Day.
About uh, six months ago, after uh, doing uh, stupid pet tricks uh, pretty much once a month for the last two years, we decided that if people are teaching their animals to do stupid things, chances are they're teaching themselves to do stupid things. And so we put together stupid human tricks. Once again, uh, three representations of uh, the accumulation of those. Uh, our first participant tonight, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Dan Sexton. Dan! Hi, Dan. How are you? Nice to see you again, sir. Pleasure to be back. And uh, Dan, remind myself and uh, the viewers what your uh, event is. What are you going to do for us here? I'm going to put this dime in that glass without touching it. And, and how would a guy go about doing that? A lot of pressure. All right. Where did you learn to do this? I picked it up in a bar about 10 years ago. Uh -huh. Hustling people. <laughs> yeah. And uh, made a lot of money doing this? Yeah. All right, Dan. Anything, get by. <laughs> anything I can do to help here? Nah. You want a drum roll? Yeah, that'd help. Do we have a drum roll? Dan Sexton will now put the dime in the shot glass without touching it. I'll be right here. All right, there's one. <laughs> Very close. Yeah! yeah! Thank you. Thank you very much. Very nicely done. Thank you. Dan Sexton, ladies and gentlemen. There it is in instant replay. Whoa! You betcha. Thank you, Dan. Good night. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, isn't that what makes America great? <laughs> Neil Greenstein. Mr. Greenstein, come on out here, sir. How'd I do in your name? Did I get your name right, Neil? I sure did. All right, and what are you going to do for us tonight, Neil? I'm going to levitate ping pong balls with a hair dryer. All right, and uh, obviously you have a lot of free time. Now, Neil, <laughs> uh, how did you learn to do this? Uh, oddly enough, one night I went down in the basement for a crescent wrench. Now, also. wait a minute now. here. <laughs> all right, Neil. Uh, hand in the hair dryer, if you will. There you are, sir. Is that all you need? That's all I need. Standard hair dryer? Yes. Standard hair. Standard yes. ping pong balls. All yes. right. Anything you want? Not right now. Okay, Neil. <laughs> Go right ahead. I'm going to levitate ping pong balls here with the hair dryer. Oh, there's one. Nicely done. Now he's going to try for two. <laughs> All right. Very nice, Neil. Oh, certainly a thing of beauty. <laughs> Maybe a little rinse after the show. Thank Fine, you. Neil. Let's take a look here at Neil's uh, event in slow motion, instant replay. Thank you very much, Neil, for being on the show. And there it is. <laughs> Nicely done. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Next, Mr. Stephen Paul. Stephen. Nice to see you again, sir. Uh, I, I remember this trick. It's uh, pretty impressive. Tell the folks what it is. All right, I'm going to set that tray on top of these glasses. This tray right here, sort of a pizza tin. Uh, or a cookie sheet. Or a cookie sheet. Well, what is it? A pizza tin or a cookie sheet? Uh, it's a, a pizza tin. Okay, all right. Beginners oh, at home maybe sheet, use a cookie sheet. Put it on top of the tumblers. All right, now I'm going to put eggs on top of these little cardboard holders. Now these, what, these, what are, are, uh, these, these are these are not hard are. boiled. Those are uh, match covers, right. aren't they? Right. All right. These are regular eggs, you not hard boiled. Why don't you crack it? Because after it goes in, it's not, it's going to be hard to get out. Well, I don't know what to do with it once I've cracked it, but put it in your pocket. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Your idea of a joke, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I watch this show a lot. <laughs> all right, Stephen, you're all, all right. set. It's really great to be here. I just had to say that. Well, it's nice to have you back. Okay, thank you. All right. I understand there's talk of a special. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. There's, uh, and these are raw eggs, not that it makes any difference. This is your broom. Okay. I mean, these are, I use these eggs in rehearsal, but they might be cracked a bit. Let's use some of these. All right. Now this the we're running, on, okay, we're, we're running, running desperately short on time, Stephen. Okay. Okay. Everything's loaded up. Here's your broom. Here we go. All right. I'll be in the bunker. Okay. Get in, you and Andy Kaufman. All right. Yeah. You want go. a drum roll? Yeah. All right. Here we go. All righty. so much. Okay, that's it. The best of stupid human tricks. We'll be right back after this commercial to take a look at Golden Moments from Larry Bud Melman.
Let's go back to the uh, Essex House Hotel now and uh, chat briefly with our own uh, Larry Bud Melman before we take a look at some of his highlights. Larry, yeah. uh, is there any way you could hold that microphone a little closer to your face? <laughs> No, that's all right. Larry, you yes. know uh, what we're going to do now? Uh, how long have you been on this show? Uh, two years. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've had a lot of fun, haven't we, Larry? Yes. All right. What we're, what we're going to do now is we're going to show the folks some of the highlights of your career on this show over the last two years. Oh, that sounds good. All right, I'll let you. I'll let you get back to the party. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, what can I say about Larry Bud Melman that hasn't been said already? His precise timing, his smooth <laughs> delivery. Now, those things have never been said about him. But I think if you watch this tape, uh, and I think you'll agree that once you've seen him, you won't forget him. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bud Melman in action. Great exercise to get rid of your pocket. Okay, you get the other side. Here's something else you might want to do. Take along an ordinary water pistol, which I have right here. Fill it full of ink and just maybe randomly shoot a whole <laughs> Hey, pal, you just ruined a 45 designer shirt. <laughs> You mean that shirt's also a 45? So is this. Uh, I don't care. It's one of a kind. I know. This is. You mean? <laughs> way, you way. Tired? No problem. I bought some nose toes. <laughs> Here we go. Actually, it means it's like no toes, isn't it? Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Is it too late to change my order to steak tartare? And Dan, by the way, I like it rare. The hell was that? It's the hippest thing to come on the scene since Inagata da Vida hit the charts just 14 short years ago. <coughs> Here is... Larry Bud Melman, president of Melman Productions and Melman Bus Lines, to read the traditional night before Christmas. So snuggle up to the TV and listen along, won't you? There's a night, was a night before Christmas. Not a creature was stirring. Not even a mouse. Oh. Now I gotta read Spanish. Je pourquoi avez-vous? Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. And, oh my God. <laughs> Excuse me, Larry, what, are you, what exactly are you doing there? Oh, sorry, I thought it was a piñata. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted you to carve the turkey. Well, heck, I'll go ahead and uh, carve the turkey. Which part of the uh, turkey would you like, Larry? Uh, let's see. Um, mm. <laughs> go ahead, take your time. Yeah. Welcome to New York, sometimes called Front City. <laughs> And where, where are you from? From the Eastern Shore of Virginia. Oh, do you have any questions about New York? <laughs> well, it isn't easy, that's for sure. Did you have a snack on the <laughs> Well, won't you please? <laughs> Mr. Larry's toast on a stick, the simple natural snack. Uh -oh. Just bread and wood, and that's it. And some cardboard. Now all you need is your pack in the sky, the clean, fresh air, and your toaster. All right, toaster. Well, we'll have it eventually. <sighs> toaster? How do you do this to me? Toaster! It's coming! Coming! Oh, we 
he got it. Okay. All right, screw that up. <laughs> okay, we're going to uh, pause here for station identification. When we return, we'll take a look at the after school special. They took my show away. You know, uh, this program, during the week, we are on so late that we don't reach many preteens. Uh, so when NBC offered me a chance to star in an after-school special, well, frankly, I was ecstatic to reach this age group. The program was aired a few months ago and received so much critical acclaim, well, we decided it was worth repeating tonight. homework all night? Don't you think you ought to watch a little TV? I will, Mr. Letterman. I just want to finish in time for my favorite show, Voyagers. Voyagers. It's a fine program. Keep an eye on the clock so you don't miss one action-packed minute. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, what do you say we go for a, a little walk, all right? What about my show? Well, we can talk about that outside, okay? Okay. Do you know what it means for a show to be canceled, Jimmy? No, I don't think so. Well, it's when a bunch of executives at a television network decide that a TV show shouldn't be on the air anymore. And then they take it off and replace it with something new. Sometimes that's a good idea, you know, because the show is filled with bad acting and bad writing. And sometimes it's the executives who have been bad. This cancel business, it, it can never happen to Voyagers, could it? Yes, Jimmy. And I'm afraid it has. <laughs> Jimmy! Jimmy! Hey, Jimmy! Jimmy! Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy, I've been looking all over for you. Hey, hey, hold, hold on there. Oh, I know how you feel. You heard it first, but believe me, you're gonna get over it. You don't understand. Nobody does. Jimmy, just because a show is canceled doesn't mean it goes away forever. It can live on through reruns, syndication. You mean I might see Voyagers again? <laughs> well, yeah, maybe in some form or another. You know, Jimmy, I remember when they canceled Six Million Dollar Man. Boy, I thought my world was gonna end. But then the Fall Guy premiered and my prayers were answered. Sure, it was a different time, slightly different format, but I adjusted. And you know what? I grew a little in the process, too. I know what you're saying, Mr. Letterman. The Voyagers, it was different. It was really special. I don't think I'll ever watch TV again. Jimmy, don't ever say that. Not even a joke. What should I do? I tell you what, I'll show you the NBC fall schedule. Come on. And I have a feeling we're gonna find a new show for you that just may turn out to be as good as Voyagers. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And uh, here's a show called Manimal. This one's about a crime fighter who can turn into a, a snake uh, and a bird. This one 
This one is about a chimp who lives in Washington. <laughs> you know that'll be good. Jimmy, I don't think we have anything to worry about. And to think I was sad they canceled Voyagers. <laughs> this is going to be the best TV season ever. <laughs> Maybe it will be, Jimmy. <laughs> Maybe it will. show you highlights from the dreaded steamroller. Stay with us. rock and roll band, Paul Schaefer and the gentleman, and of course, uh, David Sanborn, who is with us tonight to help us celebrate our second anniversary. You know, early on, we here at Late Night were fascinated by the scientific principle of crushing things. <laughs> and since Late Night, from its very inception, was not meant to educate and inform the general public, and by golly, we certainly have lipped up to that, we began running a segment called simply Steamroller. Here now, for your dancing enjoyment, are some highlights of those segments. A little plastic train that rides in the circle playing Clara Jacques. Uh, you mean the cute little lovable choo-choo train that plays everybody's favorite tunes? The Tooneyville choo-choo? What kind of a sick society are we? Styrofoam cooler of beer. Cooler full of beer. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> yes, sir. The one beer to mash when you're mashing more than one. One of those lovable little cartoon characters, a Smurf. <laughs> Actually, the brand name is Poo Poo Cushion, and since this is network TV, how about five of them? The microphone? Yeah. Sure, no problem. Thank you very much. Take the microphone, put it down. Right. We'll be back to take a look at some peculiar show events right after this.
Besides our regular features on this program, we also stage very special one-of-a-kind events. Events so big, they usually violate several local ordinances and send our insurance premiums sky high. Well, we think it's time to take another look at some of these wonderful things that have happened in our studio. Tonight, an NBC late night exclusive, The Russian versus the Bloodhound. December 6, 1983, with only the scent from one of his shirts to guide them, a team of bloodhounds successfully track down and apprehend announcer Bill Wendell. Tonight, they'll be going up against the Russian, Lev Schneider. One week earlier, he used his incredible psychic powers to perform a similar feat of detection. His prey, a hidden bag of hair. Tonight, East meets West in a dramatic showdown, the Russian versus the bloodhound, next. All right, we're going to, as they begin this uh, activity, we'll, uh, oh, my. Oh, my. We'll, uh, we're going, where are we? We're pausing. We'll be right back. Uh, Let me tell you what's going on. A couple of years ago, it seemed like a couple of years ago, I signed up to have cable television installed uh, here at, at my home. And uh, as you know, if you've ever had uh, to deal with cable TV people, they make you stay in your home all day and, and wait for the guy to hook it up. Well, this is my fourth pass uh, at getting it hooked up, and I really didn't want to screw this opportunity up. So uh, that's where I am. That's why I'm here. And as soon as the guy comes and, and hooks me up, I'm going to race right into New York and be there in the studio with you. Did, did you did you ever work for CBS Sports? No. Oh. I, you know, I saw that cap and I thought, well, you know, if CBS Sports guys are hooking this up, but I would I would have asked for Brent Musburger, but I guess that doesn't apply. This just in, we've got a pizza coming down the hall. But the truth of it is. We just couldn't come up with any more items to be placed in the Country Western Museum. Uh, I know there's nothing I can do to make this up to the folks who tune in all across North America, but there is a way that I can make it up to our fine studio audience. Tommy, will you bring the money out, please? Hey, Thank right you very much, Tommy. Ladies and gentlemen, I have here, oh, $300 worth of cash. I'm going to give everyone in our studio audience tonight a dollar. Okay. One, just pass them on down, if you will. Two, three. Congratulations, uh, uh, Szechuan State, all the way downtown, way downtown, 22 yeah. Chatham. What is your name, sir? My name is Lau, L-E-U. Um, uh, this is Michael Keaton, Hi. Lau. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Hi, good to see you. And, uh... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. When you work here at NBC, one of the things you do a lot is ride in elevators. And since a lot of sports originated from real-life activities, there is no better sport for this building than, of course, elevator races. We wrote a song, and there it went into the closet. Not to think about it, and all of a sudden, history... Excuse me, just a minute. Speaking of uh, history, uh, Livingston... Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Apparently, we have a winner. Is this... Uh... Uh...
Here, kid. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Okay, uh, we're going to go uh, in a couple of minutes here. The Merchant Marine Academy Choir in action. So come on back, folks. <laughs> Too much. Have a have a seat, Paul. Uh, uh, and Bill Wendell, our announcer. Bill, come on in here. We have uh, just a few short minutes left, and it was originally. Bill, thank you very much for everything uh, the last two years. I appreciate it, sir. I don't mean to say the last two. Good Lord, I hope it's not the last our two. Our 14th second anniversary show <laughs> since the late 50s. That's right. And uh, Paul, thank you for everything, sir. It has been a total gas. <laughs> Working with both of you, and I want to say it's... Now, let, let me explain a little something here. We had uh, this... We paid a lot of money for this hotel room uh, down the road at the Essex House, and uh, we were going to finish the big show with the Merchant Marine Academy Corral, or choir. What is it? Choir or corral? Both. Did it have cows in it? Uh, and they were going to sing... What were they going to sing, Paul? Uh, Mellow Yellow. No, they weren't going to sing Mellow Yellow. <laughs> they were going to sing... Hang on, Sloopy. Oh. Now... <laughs> Sorry, I was wrong. Now, hey, now we, that's how we were going to end our big second anniversary show. We have just been informed here, uh, our producer, Mr. Barry Sand, tells me that the choir has apparently taken a powder. Is this... <laughs> okay. Tim, they sounded uh, so good in rehearsal. Now, too, really... so, well, let's go, let's go to the hotel ballroom now, the casino. Uh, what is it? The key, casino on the park. Uh, and see if somebody can tell us what happened to the choir. Is Larry still there? Bob! Larry! Larry! <laughs> it looks like he's parking. Uh, Dave, you remember my good friend Dan Haggerty? Yes, I certainly do. Grizzly Adams. Yes, I certainly do, Larry. We'd now. like to invite our guests to dance. Okay. Those of you <laughs> here at the club, it, as, well, as well as those at home. Okay. Are you at uh, home? Larry, excuse me. Can, Larry. <laughs> looks like he's landing yeah. small craft. Larry, uh, what happened? Uh, by the way, what did you what did you pay for that yeah, tuxedo? <laughs> what the hell? The saxophone player is goosing the man. Did you? Larry, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> oh, God. I'm uh, listening. What's going on? What, Larry? What happened to the Merchant Marine Academy? What happened to what? <laughs> What happened to the choir? I don't know. What happened to the choir? <laughs> They're not singing now. See, see, this is... Larry, it's not a riddle. <laughs> what happened? Did, wasn't there earlier a large group of men and women singing? Yeah, there was. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell happened to them? I don't know. <laughs> Did they leave? Yes. <laughs> uh, do you have any idea? Do you have any idea why they left? No, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, did they, didn't they tell me? Did they? Uh, did they seem upset? No, as far as I could see. Did uh, apparently they just thought the gig was over? I guess so. Okay. Uh, Larry, I want to thank you, and of course, uh, my thanks to TV's Grizzly Adams, Dan Haggerty, for being at the party there. Uh, I want to thank uh, everybody in the studio audience. Thank you. Who, who, thank you. Uh, my thanks to Paul and Bill, our fine production staff, our fine technical crew. A special thanks to uh, Barbara and Jude. Thank you, Barbara. Yeah. Jude. Yeah. Uh, and everybody who's been with us the uh, last two years, I uh, certainly hope it isn't the last two years. And we'll see you again on Monday. Thank you, folks. Have a good weekend. Good night.